Hello and welcome to part 9 of Firefox OS programming. In the last part I introduced you to the web APIs and how to use them. And in this part I'll show you some more interesting web APIs and how you can include them into your apps. But first let me show you something else. As you can see here I'm in my dashboard but the icon here is broken and there's an information text here which tells me this add-on is incompatible with Firefox 26 and greater. Please use the app manager with the new simulator add-ons. Okay, why does this information appear? Because Firefox recently had an update. If I pop up the information here about Firefox, you can see it's version 27 and the last version I had installed was version 26 where everything worked fine. This system is currently under development, so such things uh, might happen. But I tested it and the app still works here with the dashboard. The simulator is popping up and um, the app is started. So in this part I won't show you how to add these add-ons and to work with the new simulator add-ons. Just like uh, let's take a close, um, a short look at this new functionality. I choose web development and there's the app manager and if I choose the app manager you see this screen. Here is my application. I already added it and here you can work with the devices and you can see here no device is connected but alternatively I can start the simulator with this button start Firefox OS 1.2 or add another one if I click Add another simulator, then I come to the page where I can install um, the different simulator add-ons, but currently only Firefox 1.2 is available, so we won't care about this in this tutorial. Okay, I click Simulator Install, and I come to this page, and there is Okay, there is actually a 1.3 simulator, but you can see uh, this version is unstable. So I'm waiting until this tutorial is complete. And perhaps then I can show you some features of Firefox OS 1.3. Okay, but for now let's return to our old dashboard. Our example is still here installed and can be started. And now let me explain you what I changed for this part of the tutorial. As you remember in the last part we developed an application to display the current status of the battery level and of the network bandwidth and we used the screen API. Well, these functions um, to get the battery level I developed new functions and called them get battery level to get the battery level and get bandwidth to get the network bandwidth as you can see here and in the file index HTML I reference them with a click handler on click is JavaScript get battery level or network bandwidth on click JavaScript get bandwidth and as you also can see I added some new JavaScript calls, which I will introduce in this example. First of all, the position, the geolocation of the user. For that, I developed a JavaScript function called getPosition, and then different other calls like um, call, make a phone call. I call that function call number or send an SMS, send SMS, call the configuration app of the phone, call config, pick an image from the gallery, pick image, and pick contact to pick a contact. And if we start our new example 3 in the simulator, we can see that all these functions are available through button clicks. Here I click battery level, and like in our old example we get the battery level, the network bandwidth, if I click on position, 
the user is called for permission to give his location. I say allow and then you see the user's location will appear here. We can enter a phone number. Um, I just use 1111 and if we say make call or uh, make call the telephone application is called and the user can call this number similar to send SMS if I click send SMS the messenger application of the phone is called and what else do we have? Ah, sorry uh, call config app then the configuration is called these are all things I will show you here in this tutorial just to have an oversight I show you in short what they will look like. With pick image you can pick an image from uh, the gallery or wallpaper and then the image will appear here on the top as HTML image. I can also pick another image well, for example this one and it appears besides the already selected image. Was that all? No, pick contact is our last example. Um, the contact application somehow does not work on the simulator so here you just see a black screen. Actually on the phone you should uh, be able to select a contact from your contact list. So this is how our example will look like if it is complete. Let's start the work. Okay, the first thing you should do is because we now need permission from the user to get the geolocation here, we have to add a permission in our manifest.web app. So let's go to our project, our manifest.web app file in example 3 and add these lines here. These, nah, sorry, these lines here to get the user's permission um, of his location. It's another JSON string called the permission, permissions, and within curly braces the permission is called geolocation, and again within nested curly braces you can you, are, you have to give a description why you need the user's permission for his location so just enter use to locate me here or you can here enter any string you like for example I need your location to I don't know do something <laughs> okay so first add these new lines at the end of the manifest.web app but of course before the closing uh, curly brace of the whole manifest.web app. If we have completed adding the permission here in our manifest.web fi web app file, just save the file and let's go to our index.html file. There are also some slight changes. The header remains the same, our styles are included, our scripts, the jQuery. What is different here is, you remember we got a div element in our last example called dynamic data with the class dynamic and with the text test and we we uh, replaced the text test with um, the battery level and the network bandwidth here so this remains the same but as you can see I added another div called dynamic image data the class is also dynamic and the data which goes here is the images you saw when we selected in our simulator if we selected the functionality pick image I can do this again uh, pick image I picked an image from the gallery and the image appeared at the top and this is the location you can see here below the first div with the test string there's another div with an image and this is where the picked images will be placed. Okay, 
and below our dynamic image data div there are all our buttons referring to the different JavaScript calls which call the referencing API. Battery level, network bandwidth, position, a text area to enter the phone number and two buttons make call, send SMS and other buttons call config app, pick image and pick contact. Contact. Okay, this is all you have to change in your index.html file. Add another div called dynamic data and add the links to the different JavaScript calls and I call them get battery level, get bandwidth, get position, uh, call number, send SMS, call config, pick image and pick contact. So the next thing we have to do is to develop the JavaScript functionality to call the web APIs and to replace the test string or the the image or insert the image data here in the dynamic image data diff element. Okay, let's get started. So open the file my scripts JavaScript, my scripts JS, and you can see here the two functions get better level and get bandwidth. They are very simple. Just insert the functionality of our last example within this function call. Get bandwidth, get battery level. But we also uh, already covered this in the last part, so let's skip to the interesting part, get position. As you can see, I developed the function get position here, and this function will be um, will return the position of the user for us. So let me explain what you have to do and what will happen here. Okay, first you have to keep in mind if you call the functionality to get the position of the user by GPS it takes time and actually on the device I have available here, it's an Alcatel device, it took almost two minutes to get the position so the time between the call of the function and the time you get, you actually get any coordinates from from the API could take from seconds to minutes and so we don't know when this happens it might happen after five seconds or after five minutes so first there are two functions you have to develop within this function one is called a success function and an error function so what are these two functions Basically, it's uh, very simple. Um, if you start getting the geolocation later here in this example with navigated geolocation get current position, you tell the device to try to get the user's permission to get the position and to actually get the position, and then the API handles um, how you are informed about the perm the position. So, for example, after one minute, if the device can provide a position, the API calls the success function automatically without anything to be done by you. And as a parameter, you get the position object of the current determined position of the user. And you can see with position dot coords for coordinates dot latitude and with position dot coords dot longitude you can access the latitude and the longitude of the current position. So you can be sure this function is called if the position could successfully be determined. So if we have the position the latitude and the longitude, we just do the same here in our success function as we did in the get battery level function. We replace the text within the diff elements dynamic data with the text lat for latitude and the current latitude and long for longitude with the current longitude. 
So, what happened here in the simulator is nothing else than, of course, this here in the simulator is because it is a simulated location, <laughs> it happens almost at the speed of light. So, if we click position, then the user is asked to permission to give um, to give his permission to get the location. Okay, I select allow, and then this uh, this success function is called, and you see the text test is replaced by latitude and longitude by the current coordinates of the user. But what happens if somehow the position couldn't be determined? Well, it's very simple. The function error is called, so that you know that anything went wrong and you couldn't get any position data. What we do here is just print out could not get position. You can name these functions as you like. You can call the success function perhaps um, success getting position and the error function could be called error getting position. All you have to do is in the call I'll explain you now. Navigator geolocation get current position. You have to provide the name of these two callback callback functions. First the name of the success function and then the name of the error function as parameters. Okay, so let's go further. We have one function success which is called when the position could be determined within the get position function and another function get error within the get position function to be called if anything went wrong. After these functions have been defined, they don't get called at the moment you call the get position method, they're just skipped. And this code is actually executed. So what we do here is we check if the current navigator or the current browser is able to get geolocation at all and we do this with if geolocation in navigator and if this is true you can be sure that navigator geolocation get current position can be called and this is what we actually do when we have geolocation available we call get current position and we give the get current position method the name of our success function and of our error function and everything after this point is handled by the web API. Um, it either calls our success function after a time or our error function. If for some reason um, geolocation is not supported the else part is executed and here we simply replace the test string with geolocation not supported. This all looks more complicated as it actually is. Just simply remember, write down a new function, for example get position, and within this function define two other functions, one called success and one called error, and within the success function the parameter of that function position is given to you and you can get the latitude and the longitude from this position object and do anything else with the position. And then after you have defined these two functions just check if geolocation is supported in the navigator and call navigator geolocation get current position and from that time on um, the web API tries to get the position and automatically calls either one of these two methods, success or error. That's all you have to implement in JavaScript to get the user's geolocation. And of course in the index.html file you have to reference the method getPosition, for example with a button as I did it here. Um, on click JavaScript getPosition and I already showed you this. If you start in the simulator, the app, and click on position, the user is asked for permission because we added the permission in our manifest. Click allow and on a, we're on a real phone it might take minutes but here in the simulator you have it at once. The current position, latitude and longitude. 
what you can do is here you have a button to fake the, the current position of the user um, in the simulator. If I click this button you can see I can edit the coordinates for example let's take here not 1237 but 38 and I click OK let's call the function again position and you can see now the latitude is 38 now. That's a good, very good way to test um, the user's position without having a device at hand or you don't want to walk around all the time just to test the geolocation functions, you can fake the position here in the simulator. OK, let's move on to our next example, make a phone call. First, of course, you have to insert um, an input field here with a label, please enter the number, and then input type is equals text and I gave it the ID phone number and also the name phone number and then this text field here should appear where you can enter the phone number. And second of course we have to develop a new JavaScript function um, and this function is referenced by another button called make call and with JavaScript call number, that's the name of our function. Um, and you can see here as a parameter, we call document get element by ID phone number dot value. And with this expression, we get the value of the text field. So the number the user entered is passed to our call number function here in this line. That's all you have to change in your index.html file. And now let's look at our JavaScript. Here is our new function call configuration or call config. And before I explain the whole function here, I tell you a little more about web activities. So what are web activities? Let's first look at the web API pages I showed you in the last part. And there's an API called web activities. And you can see the batch non-standard is attached here. This means that web activities are currently non-standardized. And there's another approach called web intents, I think, by other vendors. But Firefox OS supports web activities. So, what are web activities? To explain this, mm, I added a few lines here from hex.mozilla.org. Um, basically, they have the following features. They allow secure access to hardware. So, instead of asking the user to allow yet another app to use the camera, you send the user to the application they already trust to do this. So, within your application, you can tell Firefox OS to call, for example, the camera application to take a photo and give you back the result, instead of writing your own functionality to take photos. Second, they allow your app to be part of the user's device experience. Um, instead of building a camera interface, you send the user to the one they already are familiar with to take photos. Um, that's what I already explained. You don't have to write a camera application yourself. Just use the application the user already knows, which is installed on the phone, and let it give the photo back to your app. Then you allow apps to become an ecosystem on the device. Instead of having each app to do the same thing, you allow them to specialize on doing one thing and one thing well. And last but not least, you keep the user in control. They can provide you with the photo from anywhere they want and they can store results from your app's functionality where they want rather than in yet another database on their device. This basically means that, for example, if you want to use a user-defined photo in your app, you can either use the camera to take the photo or you can 
let the user pick the photo from the gallery or any other source he might have uh, available. So basically web activities are nothing else, in short, than um, calling already installed functionalities or apps on the Firefox OS device. And of course our first example, calling a phone number, um, call number here, is such a functionality. Every smartphone should have the ability to call a phone number and should have such an application installed. So what we do here within our function call number is nothing else than calling the phone dial application of Firefox OS. So how we do, do we do this? For all mm, web activities we need a new instance of mods activity. So we declare a variable called call here in this example and new activity is our object, then this object does have different parameters associated here in JSON notation. A name, in this case the name must be exactly this one, dial, and data, and of course the data to dial is the phone number to dial, so number, and we provide the number from the text field. You remember we call our our JavaScript function call number with the parameter of the the number the user entered in the text field. So our parameter number will be this number. And this is all. This is all the magic you have to do to call a phone number. Call number, a new JavaScript function with the parameter of the number to dial. This can also be a static number, but here, as I explained, we take um, the number the user entered here in the text field. So just define this function. Within this function, create a new instance of mods activity with these parameters name, dial, and data, the number. So let's see if this works. Let's save this file, my scripts, JavaScripts. Make sure you have added these two lines, that the button appears, and let's enter a phone number 0491111111. I don't think anybody's got this number, or at least I hope so. Don't call it. <laughs> and I click our button Make Call, and you can see instantly. Um, the dialer application is started. What you see here is a whole new app. Firefox OS started the dialer application. Um, you might be familiar with this concept from Android um, with the intents and you can start um, an activity, a whole other activity with intense, for example also the, the dialer application, and this here is nothing else. Firefox OS just opens the whole app dialer and displays the dialer with the number we provided as a parameter. So we can't go back here, so I have to press the home button and restart our example. This is what basically happens. If we click make call if we click make call, the JavaScript function make call or call number is called and we tell Firefox OS to call the dialer application with and the, the dialer application with a mods activity and with a name Firefox OS recognizes okay the user wants to start the dialer application with this number and that's all. If we don't want to call a number but send an SMS to that number, the functionality is almost the same, so first I explain the JavaScript function here. The content is almost the same, I just call that function send SMS 
as a parameter we also give the number the user wants to send an SMS to and we create a new mods activity just like in the call number function the only thing that is different here is the name it is not dial but it is new which means the user wants to create a new message of any kind and what kind of message this is is part of the parameters here in the data section it's of the type web sms sms and the number is the number the user entered so if this function is called the SSMS application or the messenger application installed is started with this number and the user can enter the number and send an SMS. What we have to do in our index.html file is just add another button send SSMS which does not call call number but send SMS and the parameter is the same document get element by ID phone number value. That's all. Let's check this. I have already entered a number here. I press send SMS, uh, send SMS instead of make call and the messenger application is started. Okay. What else do we have? call config app. If I press call config app the configuration application of the current device is called. I click it, call config, and you can see the settings screen appears. The settings screen of Firefox OS is also a, an independent application. You can almost do any settings here Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sound, display, what else, whatever you like. So, we have the button here, call config app. What you have to do is add another button called call config app and in the on-click handler just say JavaScript call config. And this is the method we have to develop in our myscript.js file. You can see the call config function here. The same as for call number and send SSMS. Just create a new mods activity. I called it activity here, the variable name. And the name in this case is configure, exactly like you see it here. And in the data section we have a target attribute and use device in this case. Um, I don't really know what other parameters are possible here. Um, perhaps perhaps simulator or I don't know other values can be used here but be sure that device is the value you have to use if you want to call the devices native settings app. So the name is configure and in the data section use an attribute target with the value device. That's all. Almost the same as in on the other two methods call number and send SSMS. Define a new function call config. Create a new mods activity with the name configure and in the data section the target device call this function in your index.html file call config app on click javascript call config and you should be fine you don't need any special permissions in the manifest we just have geolocation here you don't need another permission for this so let's see call config app and it works okay Now let's come to another interesting example, pick image. I click on pick image and I'm able to use the camera or the gallery or wallpaper in this case to select the image source. I won't select camera here because the simulator does not, ha does not have a camera installed. 
So I select wallpaper and I come to a list of um, pre uh, pick image of pre-installed wallpaper images on the device or on the simulator. I select one image and it instantly appears here at the top. Okay, so let's sh uh, let's dive into this and how this is implemented. Of course we have to add another button called pick image as a value in this case and call the JavaScript function pick image. And how this function is implemented we will see now. We go to my scripts JS, search for the function pick image. So what you have to do is write another function called pick image. And now comes the interesting part. You remember in the um, geolocation example you had to provide two functions for success and error and these functions were called asynchronously perhaps one minute later or two minutes later after the user called the get position method because the position is not instantly provided that is the reason why the system uses these callback functions and you might know that if you select pick image the user of course takes time to pick an image you don't get the the image back from the user within a millisecond <laughs> so um, for this example pick image we also need callback functions and I called it activity on success for the success and activity on error if an error occurred so um, but first let's define our mods activity to pick the image as in the other examples declare an object as new mods activity the name of this activity is pick so you tell Firefox OS to pick anything and what to pick is explained here in the data section it's of type image JPEG so Firefox OS knows you want to pick an image. After you have called this mods activity the system is waiting for the user to pick an image or to cancel the pick of an image and if this is finished it either calls the on success function or on error function. So what happens in the on success function? What we do here is first you remember in our index.html file we declared a new diff element called dynamic image data and what we will insert here is an img element, an image element with the source of the picked image. So let me explain you how to do this. First we use the JavaScript function document create element and the element is img for image so we tell um, Firefox to create a new image element and we say that the width of the image shall be 80 pixels wide. In this case you can use another world, you can use 120 or 200 as you like. Um, I used 80 pixels here for one image. So and the source of the image now comes the complicated part um, imagine yes you have to imagine <laughs> the source of the image is created by window URL create object URL and as a parameter of this function call you give this result blob. So this result does not appear here anywhere, this result blob. Just imagine this value is um, determined automatically. You can access it in the onSuccess function and it provides you with the uh, 
local URL of the image. So if we pick an image from the gallery, this contains or this whole this whole um, line creates an URL for a locally stored image or an image from the camera and assigns it as the source of the image. This is what this line internally does. And then it even becomes more complicated. <laughs> we create a variable called dynamic data and with this line document query selector we tell the system to go actually to go to the part in the document where we have defined the ID dynamic image data so we go or the system goes to this part here of the document and then in the next line we say dynamic data append child and as a parameter we give our f freshly created image element we created here in these two uh, three lines so what actually happens is um, the system is going to the dynamic image data section and adds here a child element this might look like image source and so on this is what you have to imagine what really happens if we execute this uh, JavaScript part. So an image is added between the div and the slash div of our dynamic image data um, part of the HTML document here. Okay. This is what happens here. And we have another function, the error function, activity on error. We just do an alert here um, if something went wrong. So, let's repeat it in short. Write a new function called pick image. Create a new mods activity like in the other examples. The name of the uh, mods activity is pick and in the data section give the type as image JPEG. Then develop two functions, a success function and an error function. In the error function just do an alert that the user knows something went wrong and in the, in the on success function do the complicated part here which is basically nothing else than create a new image element with the image the user picked from the gallery or with the camera and go to our dynamic data section and insert this image element as a child so that it actually appears here. That's all what happens in the pick image function. I will restart the simulator and so that we can see this from scratch, refresh I select the pick image button and I can use either the camera, the gallery or wallpaper. I don't use the camera because the simulator does not have uh, does not provide a camera. So I select wallpaper, I select an image and in the moment I click this image or I select this image the method activity on success is being called. This is what you have to imagine and if I click the image this function is called and dynamically at the position of the um, of the dynamic data div element here a child element image is inserted at exactly this position. This is the whole magic. <laughs>